Synopsys helps organizations of all types integrate and automate security throughout the application lifecycle, while maintaining the velocity that customers expect. First, we'll explore how Synopsys tools work in a developer's integrated development environment, or IDE. CodeSight, our easy-to-use IDE plugin, gives developers a low-friction productivity boost by identifying security issues as they code, without the need to switch tools or manually invoke a scan. CodeSight integrates multiple Synopsys application security analysis capabilities, optimizing them for effectiveness at the developer's desktop. This all-in-one, developer-focused solution empowers teams to find and fix defects as early as possible. Let's look at how CodeSight works. In this demo, we're going to put ourselves in the shoes of a developer who is using IDEs to write up code for their applications. And in my example here, I have IntelliJ, which is a JetBrains product built for Java and JavaScript primarily. And this IntelliJ IDE plugin is available either as a community open source free version as well as a paid ultimate version. I'm using the paid version here for my demo. So developers would start off by downloading the plugin directly from the marketplace. They would go to plugins, search for code site. All of our plugins are hosted on the individual marketplaces, so they're readily accessible from the IDE for developers to search and use and install. And so, the installation is a simple click process. You would select the box, hit OK. The IDE restarts. For the purposes of our demo, this is already set up, so I'm just going to hit OK. Now, once you're done with this process, you can see this view pop up in your IDE panel, letting you know that there are multiple components before the plugin can be operationalized. This is the plugin component, which is what the block at the top says. CodeSight does automatic scanning and issue generation, lists the version of the plugin, whether or not it's installed, not installed, and then what tools or engines, for lack of a better word, are needed to essentially operationalize it and get the scans up and running. So today, as I mentioned, we support both Black Duck SCA and Coverity Static Analysis. And so customers have the option to essentially select and go through the installation process for these two engines. The installation process is pretty straightforward. It's just putting in your username, credentials, and your server details. Something similar to this view right here. So there's one for Coverity, and there's one for Black Duck. So this view will pop up in the IDE panel again. Because I've already set it up, it doesn't pop up for me, but you would typically see this view come up when you would just input your credentials and input your server. And you're off to the races. When this happens, the plugin is smart enough to understand that everything is validated. It checks for your license, it starts downloading the engine, and it starts leveraging the capabilities to initiate automatic, fast, just-in-time scans, depending on the triggers applicable. So in the case of Coverity, for every change that you make to a file, or you open a new file. So it's very specific to a single file or set of files. Something like a POM in the Maven example, or a build.gradle for Gradle applications. So it's able to sort of trigger a scan when you make changes to that POM file in the Black Duck case, or you add a new POM file, and it takes that as a trigger and sets it up. The code site functionality is also set up like just the way you have your systems notifying you about anything you need to do on the system to make it get operational. So there's a concept of notifications. So you'll get notified here if you have to force a rescan, or you have to input your credentials again because you timed out or the credentials were not valid. So think of it like a, a system monitoring interface that lets you know what you need to do to get this thing operational. And that's basically the extent of the installation setup and configuration. Once you're done with all three pieces, you'll see these checkboxes, letting you know that's okay. The plugin and the tools are both installed. So if there's a new update available from the central server, in the Black Duck case, it's Black Duck SCA. In the case of Coverity, it's either Coverity Connect, which is on-prem, or Coverity on Polaris, which is in the cloud. Black Duck SCA is available both on-prem and in the cloud. So either, CodeSight works for both of them. So no problems there. Once you're done with this setup process, you would typically just get into your IDE, start making changes, and the scans would trigger automatically in the background. What you see here is a list of issues coming in from both our static analysis scans and our open source analysis. So all the results that have been appended with component, these are coming in from Black Duck. The other results are actually coming from static analysis. So let's look at a Black Duck issue first. So I'm going to open up this component, Apache Tomcat 9012. It's got 10 issues or 10 vulnerabilities attached to it. The best way to solve this is to upgrade to 9037, which has no vulnerabilities. And this is a fairly recent patch, like it's less than a month old. Similarly, we are also verifying that this is also available for you to use. So you know how you can fix it and resolve it. So providing you with guidance on how to upgrade the component and fix the underlying vulnerabilities. If you also want to understand what the underlying vulnerabilities mean, in my example here, I have data coming in from the National Vulnerability Database, as well as the Black Duck Security Advisory, which is a premium capability that we offer. So I can understand what the issue is. 
I can link back to the record in Black Duck SCA and better understand the extent of the impact that this component has on my code base, figure out if there's an exploit, etc. So you have all that contextual linking from right here within the IDE. And then we also provide you with licensing information. License families, is it restrictive for you to use? Is it permissive for you to use? When was it first detected? So this was detected yesterday, as you can see. It was last scanned yesterday. It was detected by the Black Duck tool. So this is all the Black Duck information. Similarly, let's look at a Coverity result. So I'm going to look at a cross-site request forgery result right here. So it's going to give me details about the issue. Where is it found? Is it a single file, meaning is it found, is it localized to my IDE, or is it coming in from the central server, which is what we call a full scan? It also tells me where in the code this is a problem. So line 80 is a problem. So you'll see icons identifying and highlighting the issue within the code itself. So inline annotations are also letting me know there's a cross-site request forgery. This is a main event that's being captured here in line 80 and line 81, and other sort of contributing events coming in from 84 and 89. This is basically how your call graph is going. So, you know, you're essentially able to understand the execution flow and helps you better identify, triage, and fix your problem. We also tell you what category of security issue this is. It's a high impact security, so the severity is high. It's related to a CWE, which stands for Common Weakness Enumerator, which tells you the category that this belongs to. It gives you guidance on how to resolve it and also folds in incontextual linking with e-learning. So our e-learning coursework, which focuses on the education aspect of it, in addition to effective identification and remediation, which our Coverity and Black Duck tools offer, give you guidance and education on how to avoid these issues in the future. You can also dismiss certain issues and say, this is not applicable. So I can say, not applicable for my use case. And I can confirm the dismissal. Once I confirm it, it disappears from my outstanding list and goes to my dismissed list. So we can see that I had dismissed something right now. Everything turns to green and it synchronizes with the central server. So I now know that this issue has been dismissed and if for whatever reason the central admin wants to override it, they have the option to override this dismissed issue. And then it'll pop back up in my outstanding list. I'm just going to say incorrect for now and confirm the undismissal. Same for this one. And we can go back. This filtering view can be tailor-made for current file, all scan files, dismiss files. You can change and toggle between scopes to choose the one that makes most sense for you. You can also sort this by severity, going from critical high, medium, through low. Looking at if you want to sort by type, you could do that. You could sort by location. So all the ones that have a location attached, uh, attached to it can be listed first by scan type. Is it local? Is it local and existing in the server or based on a timestamp? Timestamp and severity are by far the most popular ones that we see our customers use. And you can also search through the search mechanism. So if I say Tomcat, I'm able to identify the Tomcat issue and find this. I'm able to even use Spring Framework. So I've found Spring Framework here. It's also able to give me the same level of information. And that's, that's pretty much it. This concludes the code site demo. If you have any additional questions, please reach out and someone on our team would be happy to sort you out.